Hi there, my name is Liam Griffin and I'm a developer community manager here at Shopify. Today, we're going to be looking at how to output video, 3D models and images on product pages using the recently launched product media feature for Shopify themes. So this feature is going to be crucial for you if you're working with clients who want to display rich media on their product pages, as well as implementing this on your own custom theme builds to enhance their functionality. In this video, we'll be looking at the new liquid attribute product.media, which outputs these different types of rich media associated with a product, as well as the new media liquid filters, which allow us to render these rich media types correctly on the browser. So the techniques outlined in this video are also described in a blog post on our partner blog, uh, which we've linked in the description below. So if you like, you can follow along with that. So before we dive into the actual code of the tutorial, I just wanted to spend uh, a few minutes looking at how your clients can very easily uh, attach and upload rich media, uh, different media types to each of their products. Um, so on the admin, if we move to uh, products and we um, find one of our products that we um, want to add media to, um, you can see here that um, there is a section for media. This uh, was previously called images, and um, we've now extended that to include um, a range of different types of uh, media. So you can still upload images at this area, um, but you can also add um, MP4s um, for video. Uh, you can add 3D model files. Um, the file that's accepted is GLB files, and there will actually be some linked uh, test example GLB files that you can use for your own testing. And what's also very cool too is that you can attach or you can link to YouTube videos as well. So you can add media that's not actually hosted on Shopify or uploaded, um, but through YouTube too. So that's very helpful if your clients uh, might have videos on YouTube. So once you have uploaded your videos or you've linked to external videos or you've added 3D model files, um, these newer media types won't actually be rendered on the product pages unless the theme that you're using has been updated to uh, support product media. So specifically what this entails is that you will want your theme to be looping over um, product.media rather than uh, over product.images, which is the previous way that themes would have been able to render um, images on a product page. So as an example, the current theme on this uh, development store that I've created and um, that I'm testing out this product that has my product images on, um, this is using the free simple theme, um, a version of which that hasn't been updated to uh, support product media. Now, even if I have different media types added to this uh, product, um, if I go to preview it on the live theme and I go into the product page, um, I'm only seeing the image appearing here. So since the theme doesn't support product media, um, the media types um, like the videos and the 3D models are not being rendered on the front end. And if I take a look at how this product page is being rendered at the moment. Um, if I look at the product template.liquid section, which is rendering this product page, um, I can see here um, that the images are being rendered uh, within this container um, using the for loop here. It's looping over uh, image in product.images. Um, so all of this um, markup here uh, is being rendered uh, to display the images on the product page. So even though I have uploaded a video and I have uploaded a, a 3D model and I've linked to a YouTube video, and we're only seeing uh, images associated with the product appearing here um, because only images are being supported in this uh, for loop. Um, that's looping over image in product.images, um, which is why we're, we're only seeing this image appearing here. So what we're going to do is adjust the configuration 
of this uh, theme, of this simple uh, theme that we're customizing. And we're going to remove the for loop for image in product.images and replace this uh, with the uh, product media compatible new updated version of this so that we'll be able to output all of those rich media types that we have uploaded from the admin. An important piece of this puzzle is going to be the new liquid uh, variable that I mentioned and the new liquid uh, object associated with it, with product is product.media. And let's just quickly take a look at what the object on its own will output um, without us uh, doing anything to it. Uh, so in this case, I'm using ThemeKit to locally uh, customize my theme files. Um, here I've just added that variable that we mentioned, product.media within um, the grid where our images are currently being uh, outputted. Uh, so if we go back to our product page and we reload it, we're seeing here, this is a new addition to the page and it's showing us um, the file names of images that are associated. So we, we just have one image here. It's giving us the file name. It's also telling us that there's an external video drop. So that's our YouTube video. And there's also a model drop, which is the 3D model, and then the video drop, which is the MP4 that we uploaded. So on its own, uh, all the product.media variable does is that it will output um, the file names and the drop names of the media um, that are associated with a product. So if we move back to our product template.liquid file, uh, and we look at the for loop where our images are being rendered, um, we're going to see how we can replace this uh, with some simple uh, liquid that will output the different types of media that are associated with our product. Just before I remove this uh, for loop, you can also see that there is a lot of different um, assign and captures being used. And also that uh, we are rendering a snippet for the image style. And we're not going to be recreating a lot of this styling um, because we just want to look at the, the basic uh, approach for adding this. Um, but also just do keep in mind that uh, you're free to you know customize um, how this will be set up in um, the way that you'd like and, and the one that's specific for your theme as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this uh, for loop. Um, I'll also remove our variable. Um, so now we have this, this empty container and I'm going to set up a for loop uh, that will uh, render our media. So what it's basically going to look like um, is this, is we will have opening uh, for loop that is going to be looping over product.media, as I mentioned. Um, and it looks already a little bit like how the opening of the uh, image for loop uh, was looking. But what we're going to be seeing in this area here is we're going to be creating different uh, conditions and different containers. Um, for the different media types. So this on its own is not going to display anything. The, just this, this code for media, that's just a placeholder for where we're going to be adding in the different elements. And if I go back to my product page, reload, um, we should see um, nothing appearing here. So we are going to go back and we're going to start filling in um, the different elements that will take the place of this placeholder. The first element or media type that I want to display within our for media loop is going to be uh, images. I want to add my images back into our page. Um, so I'm going to um, just add this simple set of control flow tags. Um, I'll be including this as a gist in the description below as well. So you're able to, to take this code example. Um, but basically this is um, just a simple set of uh, case and, and when tags um, that will allow you to uh, output the uh, image within this uh, container here. So you can see here we have the container with class uh, product hyphen image. And this is where we can see some familiar uh, elements like the image URL filter. 
Um, and now once I save this, we should be able to go back to our browser. Uh, I'm using ThemeKit here to synchronize my local files uh, with the live store. And when I reload the page, now I'm seeing my, my images are appearing. So, so now we have our images back. Um, this is great. Our next stop now is going to be adding um, in the, the videos that we've uploaded. So now we can start adding in all of the different uh, media types. Um, we have our, our case statement set up. So now for each one of the different um, media types, whether it's external video or video 3D model, we just need to create a new when condition. Uh, so for example, I can add in um, when external video uh, and also we'll link to the docs page that will show you all of the different uh, types that are available. Here we can add in a new condition for external video um, that creates a separate container for that. Again, uses uh, the media uh, object and um, this uh, external video tag. And we'll look into media filters in uh, a few moments. Um, but uh, once this is added and I can save and sync up with ThemeKit, um, we should also start seeing our YouTube video appearing uh, alongside our uh, product image. And yeah, so yeah, exactly here we're seeing um, our video being rendered right below our product, um, which is exactly how um, this is being set up in our, in our loop. Um, so uh, let's let's start adding in all of the different types as well. So before we add in uh, the rest of our media types, I just wanted to take a quick look as well at the media filters that are being applied to each one of the media types. Um, in this case, we have external video tag. Um, so what this is actually doing uh, for the external video is that it's applying a iframe around uh, the media type. So in this case, around the video, um, which allows the video to be displayed. So if we go back to our product page and if we um, just inspect the video, uh, we'll see that it is uh, getting this iframe applied around to the element. and. This is actually being caused by this external video tag. And there's more information on all of these media filters in Shopify.dev on our developer documentation um, that explains what all of the different filters are doing in the different situations. So the next media type we're going to add is a video. So different to our external video, which is hosted on YouTube, this is going to be the MP4 that we uploaded. Um, and again, following the same method, um, we're going to add a when control flow tag, um, which is going to be followed by a container that has the media object for displaying the media, uh, the video in this case, and also um, a media filter. Uh, in this case, we're passing some perimeters to it as well. Controls true, which will actually show us uh, a play button so we're able to interact with it. Um, by default, um, this is not visible, so make sure that you have uh, controls true uh, being entered within uh, this uh, object. And if we go back to our browser and reload, uh, we should see uh, the video appearing. It might take just a second to load. And you can see here, it's it's actually quite small. Um, it's just by default, um, or oh, it's gotten a bit larger there. And I haven't added any styling to this, um, but you can see that this is the MP4 that I've added. Um, and when you're setting up your own layout, uh, you're able to uh, customize that to, to look exactly how you'd like. Um, but this is you know, the default size um, for the moment. And yeah, this is rendering uh, you know correctly for me. I'm happy with this. So uh, let's move on to our final media type, which is our 3D model, which is uh, very exciting. So displaying 3D models on your uh, storefronts, uh, or uh, enabling that for your clients is one of the most interesting aspects of the product media uh, feature set. And because it really unlocks a whole new range of opportunities for buyers to interact with products on a storefront. 
um, which I think is is just really amazing, uh, being able to have that level of interactivity. And again, uh, we're adding it in a very similar way to how we added in videos, external videos, images. We're creating a new condition using a when tag, and again, using the media object. Um, and now we're using the model viewer tag to generate um, the markup that will be needed to render the um, model on the page. Uh, so once I save this, we should have our model of the chair um, rendering on our storefront when we reload the page here. Um, again, it might just take another uh, reload to synchronize everything. Um, but yet we're seeing here the model is being loaded. You can see here um, this chair, I can interact with it with my mouse. I can turn it around, move it into you know, any angle that I want. And again, this is just appearing as a default size. You can adjust how those these sizings would appear and what layout it would be and what position it would be. Um, but we can see just from this simple uh, few lines of liquid that we're able to connect with the 3D model that's associated with the product on the admin and very quickly just start interacting with it uh, on the product page too. So, so this is great. So um, I have uh, this gist is also available in the description. Um, I'll link to it. So you're able to um, just take this entire code and add this into your own theme bills. Um, but we'll also just take a minute or two to maybe look at the different uh, options that are available. So depending on the theme that you're using, um, how it's laid out, you might want to set up different arrangements. For example, if you're using thumbnails, uh, you might want to um, use product.media to render those images. Uh, if you have different types of galleries on your product pages, again, you can look at what options that you have with using CSS uh, to rearrange those if you're using different grid layouts, for example. With videos too, uh, you can consider using an aspect ratio box if you want to render those videos and, and explore uh, how you can ensure that they, they are also appearing uh, responsive to the page size. You may also need to edit your theme's JavaScript files and the events on your theme uh, to accommodate for the different media galleries um, that might be using product media, um, and also ensure that everything is just loading correctly, um, especially around when you're switching to different featured media, um, just to ensure that those events are working appropriately and that everything's loading uh, correctly. Uh, we do have some advice on how to uh, update your JavaScript files. Um, I'll link to that tutorial from our Shopify.dev documentation um, as well, and that's linked in the description of this video. So I hope this tutorial gave you some helpful ideas on how to implement product media in your themes. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. We're uploading helpful videos regularly to support you with your development work here on Shopify. And remember to check out the links in the description box for more helpful resources. Thanks for watching.